Hello everyone, welcome to an episode of TCD Talk, back today with another video, and in today's video I'm going to finally be giving you all some gameplay videos. I apologize for not doing gameplay videos as of late. Um, normally when I'm playing games with my buddy Parker and Matt and other people, it's like super late at night and we're just trying to chill, right? Not trying to record or do anything nutty. Um, sorry, you hear the dogs barking in the background, but try to do the record or do anything nutty. So I haven't been doing as many gameplay recordings as I'd want to do, um, but... I'm going to try to get a couple more in for you, especially going into Uprising and kind of going into, you know, uh, you know, different things with Katsu and Fi and stuff like that. So this is a Katsu versus Viscerai gameplay. Um, I'm running my aggro Katsu list, which is linked down in the description below, uh, kind of the red line snaps build. Uh, and my buddy Parker is running a aggro Viscerai build. Um, the funny thing about the, this matchup uh, was that we're deciding who goes first here, uh, that... Um, is Agro Viscerai still has decent, um, like he has decent turns to be honest with you, uh, based off, you know, I'll pause it for two seconds here. He has decent turns. If he can keep his mob skies and keep lead the charges going, he actually can put through some decent damage. The problem with it now is he doesn't have the ability to pivot like he used to. He doesn't have pop off turns, but he, this is still a pretty competitive game. As you'll see here. Um, I like to go first here. I don't want to make him rune chance or, having some crazy Mordred Tide read the runes turn on turn one. Uh, so I go ahead and let him go first. Um, I have in even bigger than that in hand, I believe. And I have also have four reds. I pitched a red soul bead strike. So that should give him kind of a tell of what I'm doing here. Basically on this turn, I'm trying to get that even bigger than that played uh, and get my quicken token and then just arsenal pass. I'm not trying to actually attack. He ends up blocking my Kadachis which was interesting. Like I, I wasn't sure what his point of this was. I don't know if he had that bad of a hand or what it was. He even blocks the red mobs guys. So I was like, wow. Um, I guess he didn't have a blue maybe. Uh, so at, once he did that, I could tell that he was going to block out fully. And I just went ahead and arsenal passed. Um, again, I was trying to get that even bigger than that out, but he just wouldn't let me do it. Um, so kind of sucked a little bit. I was hoping I could just literally chip in one damage, get the quicken token and go. Um, but Oh, well, uh, with this, I decided to put in no rune gloves instead of running breaking skills. There's kind of a difference in the, in the Katsu community on, you know, run. Do you run no rune against a, a this? Like, is it is there any point? Because you rarely are going to block out a ton of no rune until the very end. Right. And then some people say run no rune one. Some people even run no rune two so they can block out Rosetta light game. I'm under the impression of running no rune one. And I'll tell you right now, the only the only reason I run no rune one is one to prevent late game damage at the end if I, if he's presenting lethal. And then the second reason is to block meet and greets because if you if you don't run null rune, it changes what he's allowed to do from a sequencing perspective. Like if he has one rune chant, right, and he can just play a meet and greet out, you're going to take the arcane damage and it gets automatic go again. So running null rune allows you to at least be able to stop that. So... He doesn't have much of a hand. He plays out a Spellblade Strike. He doesn't have a Mob Skies, which again, he blocked with his Mob Skies, which I thought was really interesting. I figured he would have blocked with a different card, but you know, I don't know what his full hand was there, so it's hard to say. But I block with the Sink Below, only you know, only giving up my Arsenal, which was my one card in hand, uh, or one, one card in Arsenal, so I still have a full grip here. Haven't been dealt any damage, and now I can kind of go through uh, with my strategy. My strategy here is just to push damage. The only time I block is on... Big Mav Sky of turns and uh, block on, you know, um, maybe some nasty on hit effect. But for the most part, I'm taking the damage. I'm going to race him down. Um, this game right here will actually give you a good idea of when to value block with Katsu. And I'll talk about as those turns come up. Because I, I notice a lot of people in my chat are like, or in my comments are like, just race. What does that mean? Like, do you never like ever block? Well, you do block as a Katsu. Uh, there, there's times where you should block and where, you know, racing um, is important, but there's times where you have to value block. If they do a red mob skies into a spell blade assault or something like that, um, you got to block it out. Like you can't let them make three rune chants. One, because of the damage, and we'll talk about this again when the turn comes up, but the second reason is because of the, um, the second reason is because of the, uh, the decision, right? So, like, if he does a mob skies into a Spellblade Assault and I block it out, he doesn't get the three extra rune chance. Now he has to decide if he's going to use his one floating resource to Rosetta for two, two, and one, or two, two, and three from Spellblade Assault, or whatever card it is, right? Whereas... 
you know, and then, but the problem with that sometimes is depending on how much pitch they have left is they, the viscerai has to decide, especially an agro viscerai, they have to decide if they are going to, if they are going to use their last resource or last card to pitch Rosetta for two, two and one or whatever it is, or Arsenal and have one rune champ for next turn. So maybe they can get some cost reduction. Now, if you let the Moth Skies hit, then it's kind of a no brainer for them to attack because it's coming in for like two, two and four or something like that, two, two and five. And you don't want to let go of eight damage, right? So sometimes blocking them off guys. And we'll talk about here when it comes up can save you from getting 10 damage your way. So it depends. So I played it even bigger than that. I draw into an enlightened strike, which is really nice. It's one of the top targets for even bigger than that. Enlightened strike and snatch. I'd say are the two best targets for even bigger than that. Um, I messed up my sequencing or my cards on what I wanted to draw into. So I knew when I played the online strike, I was going to draw again. I didn't, I forgot what card it was that I drew, but I drew into something I shouldn't have drawn into. I should have put that as the third card and drawn into something else, but you know, slight sequencing error. It's not really a, it wasn't a misplay as far as like rules or anything, but it was like not the most efficient uh, thing I could have done. I should have opted op ordered my second and third card. I should have flipped them. Um, so yeah, I ended up, yeah, it was a surging strike. So I had a surging strike and I think I had a, I believe it was a blue. I should have just drew, drew into the blue uh, to be able to, cause I could have been able to discard it for Katsu um, and play like a hundred wins out. Uh, and then threat because what what this did was since I drew into a surging strike and he blocked that second Kadachi, I hit with enlightened strike. I can hit with surging strike, but I don't have another attack, so I can't threaten mask. If I would have drawn into the blue, and then Katsu trigger discarded that blue, went and got hundred wins or something else, then I could have possibly like um, I could have basically threatened mask. I could have threatened mask trigger instead of not threatening mask trigger, um, you know and. But it's all right. It's all good. It's not a big deal. It was just a slight miss sequence on my part to not be able to push through a little bit more damage and threaten a little bit more. But even so, on this damage, on this turn, I've dealt, you know, 11 damage, which is nothing to sneeze at with Katsu. Not too bad. Um, he ends up taking it. He takes 10 out of the 11 because I'm not threatening Mask at this point. Like, he's already not blocked. He's already blocked with one card, and he's trying to keep at least a three to four card hand. Um, me being up 10 life is great, but... A Viscerai with four cards and two rune chants. Like, if he has a Mob Skies, he can play an Amplify for only costing one, right? Like, there's a bunch of stuff he can do. So, I'm in okay shape here, but not in great shape. Um, and this game, like, he hits a Mob Skies pretty much like four turns in a row. So, he played a Spellway Assault last turn. So, we'll see what he plays this turn. And I may end up like slightly fast forwarding through some of this so you guys don't have to watch every little thing. Because we were talking and playing different things while we were doing this. So he plays Become the Arc Knight. Um, ends up discarding an attack action. Yeah, we were just talking about stuff. So he discards a meet and greet um, to go get a Mob Skies. So the thing about this Rye is he runs in the aggro build. He's probably going to run nine Moth Skies, maybe eight, maybe two reds, but probably nine Moth Skies. Then he's probably going to have three lead the charges. So that's 12 cards that can give an attack go again. Then he's going to, I would run yellows. Then he's going to run become the Ark Knight, which is technically, so he technically has 15 targets to either A, play a Moth Skies or B, go get a Moth Skies or C, have a, a card that has the effect of giving the attack go again. Basically he has 15 cards in his deck. They either give the attack go again or can go get a card to give an attack go again. So his aggro strategy can keep up. So he ends up playing Become the Art Knight and the Mob Skies here, triggers Vis, makes three rune chants. So now he can play Amplify for free. Um, it's a yellow Mob Sky, so he's going to create two rune chants on hit here. So he plays out the Amplify. So again, like I said earlier, I'll pause it for two seconds. When this happens, if I do not block this out, he's going to create an additional two rune chants, which means... He can swing Rosetta for two, two, and three, right? Now, it's only two damage, but he only has one card right now, right? So you see, this is the exact example I was talking about. He only has one card right now. So depending on how I block this, he has a choice. Does he Rosetta me, or does he Arsenal and have a five-card hand with, with one rune chant? Now, you know, 
at the very least, like if I give him these two rune chants, he has two really good options. He can two, two and three me, right? And hit me for seven damage, or he can arsenal. And basically any card that has cost reduction in his deck, including a rune flash or amplify is going to be able to be played for free. So by me blocking this, I give him the decision of, do I arsenal with only one rune chant and maybe not be able to play a super cost reduction attack or do I Rosetta for two, two and one? So the, it, it puts him in that position. So he decides Arsenal. He's not going to Rosetta. He'd re, he, he's not going to Rosetta. He'd rather have the Arsenal for next turn. And for me, like, it didn't reduce a whole lot of damage for me. So I blocked for six there. And I technically blocked for eight. Technically. Because I, I prevented two rune chance. So I'm almost blocking for eight with two cards. Right? So I used my tunic resource to play leg tap. I still have one card in, in, in hand. So if he lets his leg tap hit... Then I'm gonna come back with nine damage with with rise and knee thrust, and so I've prevented eight damage technically, counting the rune champs that I prevented, and then I'm dealing nine damage. So he ends up blocking here. I ancestral empowerment. This is a blind ancestral empowerment. I'm hoping I draw into a zero cost card, but most of my deck is zero cost. Um, so you know I end up, he end, I end up getting one equipment block from him, which is nice. Without them having blood sheet skeleton now, it's a little bit easier to get their equipment fished out, right? So we caught you trigger here and we go get Rise and Aethrust. So we just prevented eight damage and then we came back on our turn with nine damage. Um, Really good for us. Sorry, I'm speeding up a little bit through it. Just kind of like my version of editing, right? So y'all don't have to sit here uh, through the whole game and all of our little talking. Um, But yeah, so it's five. So now he committed a card from hand and he's blocked the equipment. So now it's like I have no cards in hand but is he just going to take five to the face and be down, you know, 13 damage? So that's the decision that he has to make. And being down 13 damage to a Katsu, I don't care who you are, is not good. So he thinks about it. He ends up uh, blocking a little bit of the damage. He blocks with Skull Cap and Grasp just to prevent a lot of damage. He really wants to keep this hand, I guess. Um, and he ends up going to his turn. But now I have a counter on Skullcap, counter on Grasp. I'm in good shape. Like I've, I've baited out his block. So the reason he did that is because he had a Red Mob Skies. So again, he now played the Mob Skies, went and got a Mob Skies, played another one, right? So he's had back-to-back-to-back turns. He's running the Reeks, which normally aren't a great card, but it's a good sideboard card against me as a Katsu because I don't want to discard cards from hand. Normally I would just take damage. But if I'm going to take damage and get cards discarded from me, so he's threatening discard here, and he's threatening making three rune chants. So I have to block the physical. I can't force a discard coming out of my hand and giving him three more damage points, right? So I have to block here. And like I told you, this shows good examples of like, even as an agrokatsu, even as a deck that doesn't want to block ever, sometimes you don't have a choice. You have to block, and you have to think in your hand, okay, how much damage am I going to come back with next turn? You know, what kind of damage is he presenting me right now? And if I don't block this, how does that improve his board state, right? Like, if I want to block that, he would have made three rune chants. And again, he would have could have resetted me for two, two, and three. But since I didn't do that, he has resetted for two, two, and one, and then Arsenal. So, took six damage. You know, and I'm playing 100 wins here. It sucked because in my hand, I had 100 wins, 100 wins, wins of eternity, torn a tempo. Um, which... Is in so again in a good way is because I had 200 wins of wins of a turn of Torn Tempo, I can technically block with Torn to Tempo because I'm still gonna be able to play 100 wins, 100 wins, wins of eternity. But he forced two cards out of my hand, so I'm just coming in here for seven damage. Um, again, technically, we prevented the four from Reek and we prevented the additional three being made, so we prevented seven damage to deal seven damage, right? But we also prevented a discard. Sorry, my dog sees someone outside, I apologize for that. Um, but yeah, so he has to decide here, like, is he going to take this and let me cycle 100 wins back into his deck? I have no on hit effects. I'm not threatening mask, but I am keeping him at like a 10 life buffer. And as we get into the teens and as we get into the low tens, it's not good. Neither one of us wants to get low against one another. He doesn't want to get low against me because he's going to get Kadashi locked. And I don't want to get low against him because that arcane damage is going to start to really matter and, and pile up, right? But he ends up taking it, so I'm still at that 10 life lead here. Um, I cycle 100 wins back into my deck, and then it's on to him. So he has a he has a five card hand here, which sucks with Morgatide. Not good for me, right? He ends up playing Morgatide and become the Arc Knight. 
discarding an attack action, which tells me he's probably going to go get a Mob Skies yet again. So now he has played Mob Skies, become the Arc Knight in the Mob Skies, Mob Skies, become the Arc Knight in the Mob so He's had four straight turns from Kyle Crookler, four out of five of his turns, or three out of four, where he's gotten a go again Mob Skies in some way, shape, or form. So he's constantly, and he's doing the right thing. He has to keep pressure on me. He has to force me as a Katsu to block. He can't afford right here to play become the art knight and then go get a read the runes. Like he can't afford to set up and give me a full grip. He has to keep the pressure on. So he's doing the right thing. He's doing the right thing here. So he ends up playing that. Then he plays Moth Sky. So now he's made four rune chants and he's going to come at me with an attack where I'm forced to block it. Basically, I'm getting really frustrated in this game, too. I hit my face cam from the game. Um, but, you know. So he's coming in with a consuming volition. So he's going to do arcane here because I'm not going to block four arcane. So if this hits, I have to discard a card and he's going to make two rune chants. So you can kind of see like this game and you'll see this as we get to the end of the game is this game shows the power of this right? It shows that, you know, even in his weakened state, this game actually shows the power and the bad side of this ride all in the same game. So the first half of this game you're seeing the power of this right still. You're seeing the fact that you're forcing blocks. You're forcing people to interact with you because you have nasty on hit effects. Um, you know, I take the arcane damage here, but I have to block this consuming volition out because he's just going to make me discard anyway. Right? So I don't have breaking skills, so I don't have that four block that I could do. So now I'm just damage calculating. Like, what two cards can I get rid of and still come back at him with something at, on my turn? So I end up blocking for two here, or, or six here. Um, and then he ends up not resetting. He has no arsenal, right? Um, so I'm just going to Kadachi Kadachi here. Nothing too much. I'm trying to just poke all I can. Try to keep that life total at 5 to 10, you know, life ahead. Excuse me. So now he has to decide, like, what is useful in his turn. He ends up not. He ends up taking it. I had a blue and a razor. So this isn't ideal, right? I want to hold that razor for something good, but I'm still dealing five damage, right? And he just took four damage to the face. So it's almost like he took a fluster fist without even blocking it. So I'm still right now at a 10 life buffer. So even though he's hit me with all these on hit effects and all these things, I'm he's forcing a Katsu to get rid of two cards from hand, every single hand. I'm coming back at him with equal damage. So he's dealing four to five to me. I'm dealing four to five to him because as an aggro viscer right now, you have to keep your cards with this right aggro. You can't afford to give up two cards. You can't like, you just can't because your cards, unless you have a amplify the arc Knight or a room flash, or you play like drawn to the dark dimension or something, you're not going to get cost rune chant cost reduction. So if he has a spell blade strike, a spell blade assault, if he has a reek. If he has a consuming volition, he doesn't get cost reduction from those. And he doesn't have skeleton to pop it to give him cost reduction. So he has to keep more of his hand in order to interact. Um, so he ends up keeping his hand here. And again, a Viscera with a four card hand. I do have a 10 life lead, but it's so easy for him to take it out. He ended up having three reds, I think. Yeah, three reds in this hand. So he pitches two reds to play Rattle Bones, goes, gets an Amplify. And here's where I made a mistake. I don't think it would have changed my play any, but, but I legit forgot about Ether Iron Weave and having one resource. I legit forgot because he pulled an Amplify, right? And you, and, he pulled an Amplify, and he had two rune chants. He plays a Swarming Glue Veil for two go again here, and I'm like, wait a second. He banished an Amplify, and he doesn't have the resources to pay for it. The Amplify still costs two right now. Why is he, you know, what is he doing? So I was so confused on why he did that. Um, So I end up taking it, right, taking the Swarming Gloom Veil here. Take the two arcane and the swarming gloom build down to 22. And then he plays amplify. And I was like, crap, I literally just forgot how to use iron weave. So now he's coming in with another seven damage. So at this point I'm already committed. I got to keep the full grip. I'm just going to make us down. I'm only down two life. I'm a Katsu. Like I think I can race him and he has one rune chant. That's it. He can't really get much cost reduction. So if I can come at him with a good hand, then I'm in good shape here. So again, here I choose Enlightened Strike with a draw card. 
I didn't miss sequence here, but this is one of those plays where I want to go back and see what I could have done better. So I bottomed a command and conquer. I had four reds with a light and strike and I bottomed a command and conquer. I'm not gonna be able to pay it. My tunic's on three right now, but I still can't pay it very well. And I wanted to draw and then maybe snap it and go into something else. But again, you'll see here shortly, it wasn't the most ideal play. He doesn't know what I have, so it's not as bad. He doesn't have the information needed, but you know, I checked my my graveyard here to make him think I'm going for whelming the whelming combo. I end up snapping here. He takes the five. I katsu trigger. I go. I get rid of a sink below, and I go get a hundred wins. At this point, I'm just trying to push damage. I'm trying to get him down to eight or seven. What I could have done here, you know, I had a sink below in hand, so I had a sink below, a command and conquer, and enlightened strike, and then I forgot the last card I have in hand. Um, but it wasn't ideal. Play out the 100 wins. He has to block this because I have two cards left in hand, right? And he doesn't know, you know, what I have left. It's a little bit crappy for him because I will be threatening mass next time. So he kind of has to, and I've done a good job of keeping mask in play up until this point. So he ends up blocking for three in the Ancestral Empowerment, um, giving it plus one and drawing. And then we pitch for Kadachis here just to try to get a little bit extra damage because the reason I pitch for Kadachis here even when I'm threatening Mass is because I know he's going to block out this next attack anyway. So... I might as well pitch for Kadachis and force card advantage because he's either going to have to block with like something like Creepers or block with something like he's going to block that attack out no matter what it is. So I'd rather try to force more stuff out of hand. So if I can Kadachi, Kadachi in the attack, if he chooses not to block the Kadachis, I'm still threatening Mask Momentum on this attack, which is Whelming Gust Wave. But if I play Whelming Gust Wave before, right after 100 wins, then... I lose out on two points of damage. Like he's going to block it out anyway, because he wants to prevent me from triggering mask. So might as well try to make some, create some card advantage by playing out the Kadachis. So we took 10 damage off of him that turn. Uh, and we took off a card, right? So we're in good shape here. So he ends up playing spell by assault, pitching his mob skies. The second he does this, it tells me he doesn't have a blue in hand because there's no way, like if you, he doesn't have a blue and whatever the last card in his hand is, it costs something because he wouldn't like not play the mob skies in the spellblade assault. So whatever that card is, it's likely a red because he can't pay for the spellblade assault. So, so I know that that is probably like a consuming volition or a rune flash or a reek or something, right? So. So now it's 10 to 7. I have a full grip here. You know, I Kadachi for one. He takes it. And now I can just try to get him low and start trying to get him Kadachi locked. It's going to get to the point where he's going to start blocking. I still have Mask in play, so I'm in good shape. Um, the game really turtles up here these last few turns. And he was really thinking through this. So he ends up taking that, too. Before the damage resolved, I... Even bigger than that. And then what I do here is I have a surging in there. I think it's here. Surging or oh, it's a McGinchy. It's a McGinchy. So I was like, okay, how many targets do I have? Because if I grab the McGinchy and then play McGinchy for five, go again with the Quicken token. Right, I have also a Lord of Wind in hand, so I'm trying to see how many cards I have for targets that you know I can play it out because I drew into two Lord of Winds, which sucked to be honest. So I grab the McGinchy, I draw it, create the Quicken token, end up playing the McGinchy for five. Go again, it's still hard for him. He's only at six life, so he's gonna have to block this. Like. He can't even chip. He can't afford to even chip block this because if I have a razor in hand, he's dead. I still have one resource floating, so he's gonna have to fully block this. And he has no. He has one grasp equipment left, and that's it. 
Um, nothing else really. So even with him hitting, like, again, this kind of shows the good and the bad of this, right? The first half of the game, he's hitting mobs, guys, mobs, guys, mobs, guys. The second half of the game, he's had two turns off, and now he's lost all tempo. He got to a point where he was down 10, or down 10 life. He got to where he was up two life, and now it's still 10 to 5. So even with him hitting four mobs, guys, you know, through his Become the Art Knights and stuff like that, hitting a Spellblade Assault, which generate rune chance, and all this stuff, you know, it's, it's uh, not, you know, as good. So... So I made a booby here. I had one floating and I end up, I was like, I want to cycle stuff back into my deck, but I end up pitching the enlightened strike. What I should have done is instead of playing the stupid Lord of Wind for four, I should have just played enlightened strike sinking Lord of Wind for seven. That's what I should have done. Um, but you know, I didn't do that. Because I can't search for Lord of Wind because McGinshi didn't is not in combo. So, you know, I didn't think about that when I was thinking about damage reduction. I was thinking about I was thinking too hard about cycling stuff back into my deck instead of just pushing damage. What I should have done is I had Lord of Wind and Lightning Strike in hand. I should have just pushed for seven. I would have threatened lethal. He would have had to block with two cards from hand, or at least a card from hand, and go down to one, which doesn't feel good either. So he likely has to block two cards from hand. So that was a mistake on my part. So even as much as I play this here, I made that mistake, to be honest. So he's thinking through this, thinking through this. I'm I'm Wait, hold up. What we just do here? What just happened, y'all? I don't know what he did here. Oh, he only has one card in hand. That's why. So he ends up playing a tome because he blocked with two guards, man. That's what he did. I was like, wait, why did his turn go so quickly? So he was hoping he'd get the resources to pay for whatever he had in Arsenal, and he didn't get it. I remember that now. Such an idiot. So now it's my turn. Full grip, 10-5. I'm in good shape to win the game. And try to push some damage. But I have kind of a weird hand. I have a yellow even bigger than that, and that's the only thing I have that's not red. So I'd rather start trying to bleed him out with Kadachis. So the even bigger than that's really nice, but... I'd rather keep my red attacks in hand that are zero cost and really make him have to block out my Kadachis with his um, cards. I'm not threatening death right now with Razor, so he can technically take this and not die. But she ends up doing, and then I Kadachi again here. Ends up taking that. He, it was one of those, like, if you got it, you got it, because I can't just overblock this when you still have three cards in hand. I pitched the Hurricane Technique to play Surging Strike for four or for five. So now he's forced to block with at least a three block here, minimum. So I'm going to force one card from hand. He's really trying to keep the cards in hand. He's got two, two rune chance. He's got a card in Arsenal. He's got four cards. So he's trying like heck to keep as many cards as he can to try to present a lot of damage to me. So he ends up blocking three here to take two. I go down to one, or he goes down to one. Oh, he ends up, that's right, he ends up sync blowing. Same exact thing. So it's 10-3, but he does get rid of two cards. And then I end up 100 wins for three. Again, I'm, I'm threatening lethal here. He doesn't have any equipment block. He has to block with at least one card from hand, which is nice for me. So I'm getting rid of all his cards. He's literally just kind of an arsenal. He ends up blocking with Amplify. So what I prevented by doing that, he was really trying to pitch one for Amplify for six and two, basically, right? Minimum. Um, and presenting eight damage to me, but couldn't quite push it through.
So he only has one card in hand, one card in Arsenal right now. Pitches two to make a rune, or he doesn't pitch two to make a rune change. He plays Reek for four and two. Now, again, this is weird because, like, if I just take six here, I'm going to go down to four, and I'm going to lose a card, right? I don't want to do that. So I block all the Arcane, and I block with Flick Flack. Um, I'm not going to need either one of those cards for what I'm about to do, so I might as well prevent all the damage, right? And now, because now I'm threatening game pretty much. This is one of those times where, like, if we were in a super high level tournament, he probably would play super safe and and prevent try to prevent the razor. Uh, but he's like, if you got it, you got it type thing. Like, he's not gonna dump his whole hand. So as you can see, like. A play like that, I want to pause it for two seconds. Uh, the video is almost done, y'all. It's like, if you're still here, this is a good tip of knowledge. It's like, my last hand was fine center, Lord of Wind, so two blues, Flick Flack, and Torrent Tempo. So think through that, right? Like, best case scenario with that, with that, I have three cards in hand, and I do blue, blue, Torrent Tempo, it hits, and then I search and go get, you know, if I have it in deck, Rushing River, which I don't in this hand. So, like, I can block with fine center and flick flack and not lose any power of what I'm doing, right? So blocking those two with those or pitching them blocking with one that last turn, I still can present the same amount of damage and I don't lose any gas. And I force his whole hand out. Like I knew I was gonna deal seven damage and force his whole hand. So now I have a full grip here. I can just start off. Early, so I start with the surgeon strike first here because I want to commit cards from hand. Like I'm already threatening lethal. He's got to block with at least two cards from hand um, to block all of it out. One card from hand if he just wants to save it, which he could have done here. Um, but he, you know, he decided to kind of go. He wanted to try to stay above three so he can, you know, not do too much. I end up razoring him here. I think to win the game. Yeah, so I end up beating him here. Yeah, this is one of those games where it was like if we were like playing for super high stakes, he might have waited or might have played that, you know, a little bit more safe. But like we have been going 40 minutes. We played this game at 12 o'clock at night. So, but yeah, so that's that was a good matchup kind of showing you like how Katsu even by giving I literally gave up two cards a hand for what four turns in a row. And I still was able to keep pressure and eventually get him on the back foot. Same thing with Viscerai, like showing you Viscerai now, like the new Viscerai. He still can put out some decent damage, but if he gets on the back foot he can't really pivot like he used to be able to. And that's his issue right now. So kind of give you an idea into both heroes, but hopefully that's made sense. Um, hopefully I'll enjoy the gameplays. I will keep trying to do these more and more, especially going into the uprising season. Um, and yeah, I hope you all have a good rest of your day and I'll see y'all next time on TC talk. Thank y'all so much.